Hey YouTube, today we're in the storage room and we're looking to add an outlet, uh, technically called a receptacle, for my wife's craft table in a wall where we don't have any power. So if you're interested in anything like that, stick around. Okay, so what we've got here, we've, we need to plug this guy in so mom can turn her cups. And uh, there's no plug here, but we do have the switch that runs the, the ceiling fan light. So if there's a neutral in here, I'll be able to make a plug down below it, but I need to find out if there's a neutral or not. First thing I'm gonna do is take the cover plate off. I've got my offset screwdriver here. Uh, we call them whirlies, and you can see how this works. You just move around in a circle there, and it turns the screw head. Okay, pull that off. Now, we have exposed the switch. What I really need is some lights. Alright, so what I'm using for this task is this uh, battery powered LED light. I bought this one at uh, at Costco. It's a Caterpillar brand. I've also bought a few of the Walmart ones and uh, they work just as good in my opinion. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll go take a closer look. Now looking in there right away, I can see, oh well, that's too much light isn't it? Okay, so what I see is two black wires on the switch. That's a good sign. That means the neutral should be made up in the back. And then uh, I think if I can do this without blinding the camera, I think I see a white wire back there in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with uh, pulling this switch out of the wall so we can get a better look at the wiring. Alright, so now we get a really good look at what's going on in here. I don't know why it's all blurry. Okay, so what we've got is one of these black wires. And I'm going to guess this one. Because a lot of times guys will put a curly Q in the switch leg. But one of these wires is the, is the, uh, the energized wire, the hot, what we call the hot. And it'll come through here and the switch opens and closes the contact and sends it back out the other wire. Your neutral is already tied through and way back there in the back, I don't know if you can see that, that's the ground. So that's good news, we have we have power here. I'm gonna be able to, to drop a plug in right down the same stud line. So, what I need to know now is which side the stud is on. So I'm just gonna take my screwdriver and see if I can slip it through there, which that feels like the stud. We'll double check over here. See how the screwdriver goes through? That means there's no stud there. So the stud is right here. This box is nailed to the stud. So it, it's going to be from here to here. So when we cut our hole in, we have to make sure that we're to the left of this, of this stud right here. So let, let me go get the tools for doing that. Okay, so after consulting with the client, you know, mama, she's told me she wants a quad, which is uh, two, two of these side by side. Yeah, let me try to do this one handed so it'll look like this. Um, we're going to go ahead and use Decora plugs. We've been slowly changing out all the plugs in the house to Decora as we uh, paint and, and whatnot. And, and oh, there's a tubing right there. So I've got a cutting box that I need. That's good. This is uh, this is one of the good things about storing extra parts. It saves you unnecessary trips to the store. Let me get back in here. 
and breakers. That was a temporary light I made. I'm looking for a switch because uh, it'd be easy to swap that switch out while I've got it uh, out of the wall. What's this? Let's pull it out and look at it. Okay, single pole switch. So I've got everything I need right here. I, oh no, wait, I might need a rubber plate. Yeah, looks like I might have to go to the store anyway. Back there. Okay, so I don't have the proper cover plate, but I can do the majority of the work right now. Okay, so we've got a switch, two receptacles, cut-in box, and a new cover plate for the switch, and then uh, got my wire right here. Good to go. Okay, so we've got all our tools. Uh, I think you always forget something. You have to. It's just like going to the grocery store. I will be getting more tools later. But anyway, so what I need to do is I need to. Um, I need to find where that stud is right there down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a measurement from here to that corner, and then I'm going to go down to plug height and then measure back and then we're gonna mark out our hole and cut it. We're gonna do all of our work. We're not gonna mess with any of the wiring in this switch. We're gonna do all our work down below before we move up into uh, the switch. That way this is all done. We don't have to worry about getting shocked or anything else. Um, and then when we get up here, then we gotta worry about the, the live energy. Um, for your own safety, you're gonna to wanna to turn the power off to the area in the house where you're working. Um, I didn't because I need the light and uh, I've got over 20 years of experience doing this stuff I, I know what I'm doing so I'm comfortable doing it while it's energized but I strongly advise that you don't if you had the experience you needed to do this while it was live you wouldn't be watching this video okay so with that said let's do our measurements so all we're gonna do is push over this corner and my measurement comes out to 41 inches. Now, we're not looking for uh, absolute accuracy at this point. We just want to make sure that we're not on the wrong side of the stud. So even though 41 is past the stud, I'm going to go ahead and use that as my measurement. Now I'm going to measure up. We've got another plug. Not the part in the mess. This is also our pantry. We've got another plug down here, and according to this, it is roughly 11 and a half to center. So, we're going to match that over here as best we can. So, we're going to go down below the uh, switch, just make a tiny little mark here. That's the height we want to be at to the center of our box. Behind everything, and get it into that corner. Iron board being stuck. Okay, so in that corner, 41 inches is right near the edge of our stud. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my jab saw. Let me go ahead and zoom in for this. Like I said, I'm going to take my jab saw and go ahead and punch it through the wall. And I'm going to cut towards the stud. Um, now you got to be careful. I know that this box is, is really wide, so anywhere in this area, I'll still be able to cover that hole. So you don't want to start too far away from the stud, I guess is what I'm saying. So you're going to cut until you see right there you can hear the difference we're hitting the stud right there so we know that that spot right there is the edge of our stud okay now we're going to take our box we're going to measure it all of them are just a little bit different so it's always good to measure it just to double check yourself so this one is three and three quarters 
So that's going to be an inch and seven eighths is the uh, the half. So actually I'll go right here. So instead of using the end of the tape, I'm going to use the line here. We're going to go up one inch and then seven eighths, and we're going to make a little mark. Now what we've done is we found the top and the right side of our box. If we can take it and put it against the wall. We see we got our mark here that we can see as the top, and we got our mark here that's the side of the box. So we're going to go ahead and mark it out. You want to mark it as tight as you can, meaning you know you don't want a big gap between the box and your marking. Okay, so you see the bottom line here, side, top, side. All right, so now we're going to cut it out. Now what we want to do is we want to cut on the inside of these lines. The reason is we don't want to make the hole any bigger than we absolutely have to. And our first cut is probably going to be too tight. But we'll be able to go through and we'll find the spots where it's too tight and we'll just wide those up a little bit and then let the box go into the wall. So right here where I've hit this stud, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my saw blade vertical and start cutting. I'm trying to ride that stud. Okay, let's go ahead and do this real quick so we don't... Set right inside the line. See how there's still remnants of the line outside of my cut? That's what we're aiming for. like it fit just perfect but you can see it's kind of it's kind of hung up right here you can see a spot there where it's hung so it's good though we don't want it too loose so we're just going to graze a little bit off and then look down here you can see where i rubbed it smooth there so we're just going to graze that off real lightly try it again oh, a little bit closer now Thank you. 
So now it's just a little bump out in the corner here. It's just, so now we're gonna work the corner. There it is, nice and snug. Now the good news is, one of the reasons I cut it right up against the stud, even though this cutting box has these little wings come out on both corners, see the idea is you put it in there, when it slides in, take your screwdriver and turn the screw, a little wing comes out and as you tighten it, it slowly pulls forward until it grabs the sheetrock and that's what keeps the plug from coming out. Um, they work pretty good. I've seen them where they failed. But what I like to do, if I can, is when I put these in, I put it next to the stud anyway. I put the, the wings out and, and tighten it up the way it should. And then I will run a screw at an angle into the stud. And that helps ensure that the, the box won't come out. And we'll be doing that later. Just a quick little run down on how these things work. So now what we need to do is get our wire in. Okay. So what I've got here is some 14-2 uh, Romex. That means there's the wire is a 14 gauge and there's two legal conductors in there. There's a bare one that's always supposed to be ground in a residential system. So they don't count that one. They'll call it 14-2 with ground. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these two is the one that's got electricity and I'm going to go ahead and just move it up here. So I don't have to worry about it being in the way. I'm going to move that neutral to the side. Let's clear this hole out. Okay. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the video so far. Um, I wanted to break in here and let you guys know that there's some footage missing from what I originally recorded on this uh, on this day. Um, it was like two years ago. Uh, I lost some of the footage because of a memory card issue in the camera I was using, and some of the files got corrupted. And uh, I almost didn't put this video out, but I was going through. Yeah, I got the terabytes of video, but anyway, I was going through and I found it, and I thought, well, you know, I can make this into something. So. All you've missed from this point is when I feed the wire down to the, the plug or the receptacle. Um, all I do is there's a little little holes in the bottom of the box. I peel one open and I feed the wire down. And it goes down the wall to where I can reach in the hole below and grab it and pull it out. And then I install the box. So you missed some good stuff, but I don't think it it's, it's critical. I think I think if you've gotten this far in the video, you understand how it works. Anyway, uh, second thing, here in a minute I'm going to start talking about uh, meters, uh, some of the meters that, that I have and use, and uh, some of that footage got corrupted. And I was able to save that file, except for I, I, I was able to save the front end and the back end, and I'm missing a little chunk in the middle where I'm talking about... Uh, using your analog meter. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there and it's gonna skip and it's gonna be annoying, but I feel like there's enough there that you'll you'll get benefit from it. And then when I go to show you how to use the Wiggy, I think I'm just gonna cut that part out because it turns out one of the leads of my Wiggy was broken and uh, it's just like a huge waste of time. So I'm not gonna make you suffer through it. Anyway, y'all take care. the opportunity to eat some breakfast while I was at it. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do with our little pieces of wire and our strippers here is we're going to want to strip off, what is that, about a half an inch I guess, and bend little hooks. Now you bend the hooks, you see these little holes, what I do is I put it on there so it just barely catches and then you just, you, 
you push and turn at the same time while you're pulling on the wire. So you're pulling back, you're pushing with the tool, and you're turning. The, uh, the harder you push and pull, the tighter your, your hook will be. Because um, if you just do it real gently, you can see it makes like a big, a bigger loop. If you pull and push with some, uh, some force, you'll get a tighter loop. And then on these green ones, I'm just gonna bend those over. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and put the corresponding wires on the corresponding screws on our plug. So we're, our white screw is gonna go, I'm sorry, our white wire is gonna go on our white screw or silver screw. Um, what you're trying to do is angle it down in there. See, uh, you turn the tip of that hook in. Let's see, if I can make sure we get a better view of this. Okay, so to make sure we understand this process, I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit here. All right, so what we're doing, take your hook, sorry for all the sheetrock dust, and you put your hook in, the tip of your hook in first, and then the rest should just lay down in there. Now you can see where it's open a little bit, right there. See how it's, it's pulling away what you can do. Um, here's what we'll do. Normally I just wedge it up against the plastic there and force it to do my will. What we're gonna do instead is I'm just gonna grab it and pinch it. And see how it's nice and tight around that screw now. What we're gonna do, tighten it down. Okay, and then we'll tighten this down. There's not going to be anything on it. Take our ground screw, our ground wire, put it on our ground screw. Same process. Now right here you can see what I was talking about, how I wedged it up against the plastic. We're going to do that here. See how it, it bent it around. And then we're going to tighten this down. Okay, so now that we've done that, what I like to do is bend this, this ground back a little bit. I think it sticks out too far, so usually I'll just bend it in a little bit. See, now it's it's inside the, the plane of that. We don't have to worry about it making contact with anything. All right, I'll do the other side. The gold screw is always your hot. Or your positive, or however you want to think of it. This one, see, I made that little tail too short, and that's why it's not working to grab it against the plastic. So we're just going to pinch it with the pliers. I always do the uh, the screw that's closest to my my arm because it's easier to get the hook in. If if you're trying to do it over here, uh, there, there always seems to be a problem getting it in over there. So I don't do that unless I have to. We'll tighten that. Tighten this screw down because it's not being used. Okay, there you go. This one's ready. This is uh, what we call pigtails. Now, I want to talk about these holes. You can take a 14 gauge wire and stick it in there and it'll grab it and that's what it's designed to do. And in the majority of homes, you'll find it that way because it's fast. Um, these screws will be sticking out and, and these wires will be jabbed in there and they just jam this thing in the box and over over time the vibrations from the electricity flowing through the the wire slowly loosen those connections up and sometimes when you pull the plug out you know as an electrician you pull the plug out the plug comes right out and the wires are sticking out at you right there like that um, because they're no longer making good contact and when they're not making good contact they build up heat Heat has the potential to start fires. So that's why I don't like using those. Um, they've been doing it for years, and uh, you know, it's not against the code, but you know, as a craftsman, as a tradesman, I don't do it that way because I don't 
I don't think it's quality work. So I do it, I take a little bit more time and I, and I do the pigtails. I'm not gonna bother with that. If you use a flathead screwdriver, you can actually get these screws much tighter. Um, and then I wanted to show you, if you watch, watch the tip of that, that wire as I tighten it, you'll see that it'll actually suck in. See how it sucked in? Pretty cool, huh? Some engineer makes it so it does that. I'm gonna tighten that one. Turn it over. White wire on. We're gonna go ahead and let the screw suck this one in. Okay, tighten this one up. Here's another thing that's important to understand. Look at this, where this ground screw is. This ground screw is mounted to a piece of metal that is also the bracket that this thing mounts with. Now what you can't see is behind this plastic is it's a continuous piece of metal that runs through the whole, the whole device. Um, and, and it's basically, it's called the grounding strap, but it's also the mounting bracket. And when, when you connect the ground wire to this, that means that this metal and any other metal it touches is now grounded. And when you get between the energized wire and ground, that's when you get shocked. So when you see me doing this, guiding that with my hand, you don't do that on an energized device. Sometimes when you make the, the tail a little too long, that makes it hard to get it in there. There we go. Now I'm going to tighten this one down. And on that other plug, we tight, tightened it. Uh, we, we pushed it in with the pliers. I'll show you, you can also do it with the screwdriver. Once you give it that last little tweak, you just grab it and push it in. And now it's inside that plane there. You can't touch it on accident. Alright, so here we go. We got our two pigtail receptacles. And we've got our wires. And we're going to do now what they call makeup. We're going to make up these connections. So, we're going to go and take about three quarters of an inch off of each of these insulated wires. Okay, so these, these are just uh, regular sheetrock screws, um, and they're just an insurance policy to make sure that we don't have any problems with this plug coming out of the wall. So, let's see if I can get you an angle on what I'm doing here. I don't know if that's a good angle or not. Try it. All we're gonna do, well, this is kind of awkward with the tripod in the way, is we're gonna screw right through the box into the wood, wood stud right there. There we go. We're gonna do the same thing a couple inches higher. Strip these ones. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do the makeup. I always like to start with the ground because I want the ground furthest back in the box because it's bare. And if any of these uh, hot wires touch that bare wire, it's, it's just gonna, it's gonna short, it's gonna blow up in your face. So we wanna keep that ground back and out of the way. So what we're gonna do is take our two plugs, set them side by, you know, like they're gonna be in the box, set them side by side here. We're gonna go ahead and cut these to make them flush. We'll take this, this wire here. Rule of thumb is you're supposed to have about six inches of wire sticking out of the box. The rule of thumb we use is roughly the length of your, your strippers. So we're a little short there. Um, that happens, but uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I've seen way, way, we're gonna be dealing with way worse up there. So now I've got all the ends of those wires flush. We're gonna take our pliers, our linesman's pliers, and, and you're gonna grab the ends and at first you're gonna squeeze them all, squeeze it hard, and let it twist all those wires together. And now we're holding it here so that it twists up here. Now, to smooth it out, you're just gonna gently squeeze here, and twist and pull. And that will bring a nice little end to that there. Um, you can cut it, make it nice and neat. Desire. You can take a wire nut and tighten that on there. And we're going to get ready to bend to go back into place. We don't want to put it back there just yet because we've got these other wires to work on. But you can see how we're, we're, we're snaking back and forth just about the width of the box so that when we push this back in there, it's going to sit in the back of the box like so. Okay, so now we're going to take our white wires. Make sure our plugs stay in the correct orientation. Okay. Take these suckers, line them up. Usually what I'll do is I'll push them against my pliers and then that lines them all up just like so. Okay. Grab and twist. We've done the exact same thing with that. And now our black wire. Now, if this was a hot wire, we wouldn't we wouldn't be letting these dangle like this. Okay, I'm gonna take, flush those up like by pushing them against the pliers, and then slowly twist them around. You can see. There we go. To do is take the, the plug and twist it a couple times and that makes sure that all those wires stay together. Okay, we've got them all twisted up here. Now what we're going to do is get them prepped to go into the box. Now what I like to do is I like to start at the bottom and push up. Because what this does when I push this in there, see it like a spring, it pushes all those wires into the back of the box. And that's where we want those wires to live, is in the back of the box. And I'm going to get this one right here, we're going to do the same thing. See the, the little spring action there? I'm going to put him in first. We're going to get it all lined up so it's going to sit just about how we want it. And 
we're going to start each one of these screws. We're not screwing them all the way in just yet. This guy, get him started. It's actually easier if you start the bottom screw first. And then that way you can see the top screw. Okay, so with these plastic boxes, I don't like to tighten them all the way up with the with the screw gun. Now the reason we're not tightening them all the way in one go is because we've got to make sure they they stay straight. And part of them staying straight is making sure the wires behind them are straight. You see it's leaning left and if you look down from the front it's also canted this way. What I'm going to do is stick my screwdriver in there and I'm going to tweak it that way. Okay. Now what I've done is I've tightened it to where it just touches the plastic. In fact, I might need to back off just a little bit. Give it a little tweak because it's still canted. A little bit more, okay. Now, you see here how we get a little bit of movement? This is what we want. Just like this. Okay, work on this one. If you get your your screw hole for the cover plate lined up pretty much with the screw, you're going to be pretty good. But you want to leave it so that it'll move a little bit so that when you go to put the cover plate on, you can adjust it and it'll snap into place. Not so important with singles, but when you've got a double where you've got to get both of them rot you know, with the right orientation with rotation and then also spacing, you, just, you need a little bit of movement. But you don't want it so loose that the, the plug is loose on the wall. A little bit more. This is why we don't do it with the, with the screw bit. plate on there when we're gonna have to go and get one. Now we go to go back up top and work on the top. So first thing we're gonna do is get our length worked out. I told you just about the uh, pliers length off the wall. strip this. This is a lot easier to do when you have it something to pull against. Like I said, I'm just scoring it. I'm not even penetrating all the way through until the very end. Put that knife away. I'm going to pull this wire out. Gotta be careful. I know one of those wires is hot. Okay, so the rules they make for wire lengths are for a reason, and this is that reason. You've got like nothing to work with here. How, how are you supposed to make a connection on that? That's as long as that wire is. That is against code, 
and short of tearing the wall open and replacing the wire I don't have any way to fix that so I'm stuck working with it what I can do is I can make sure my wire is long enough so you see where I've doubled it up there a little bit that's going to be that's so it'll all stay in the back of the box looks like I'm going to line it up about right there cut that now what I've got to do is try and twist that wire on there yeah, this is precisely why they have codes against our codes for this okay so if I get my pliers in there and my finger at the same time we'll be making progress let's try that all right, we got it started. All right, I'm afraid if I twist too much more, I'm just gonna keep running my wire out. So I'm gonna nip that off. And put a wire that on. Push that all the way in the back of the box. We don't need that. And we're stuck with the same dilemma with the white wire, but we've got a little bit more wire to work with. And that's good. We're going to strip it longer than we normally would. Now, here's a misconception a lot of people have. I think that if you get between uh, one of the hot wires and ground or neutral, that's the only way you can get shocked. And that's not true because in this situation, electricity is coming in probably from this bottom wire. It's coming in, uh, goes through the switch up to our light, and it's coming back um, on the neutral. Because up there on the, at the light, you're going to have a black and a white wire, and it's going to run through the light bulb and come back. If you get between those two white wires and that light is on or was on, you'll get shocked. So treat the neutral with as much respect as you would the hot wire. There we go. See how it just adds itself in there. Real nice. And then we're going to cut off the excess. And we're going to even use their own wire net. Okay. Oh, the bottom wire is mine. That's silly. I can't believe I said that. Generally, when you hot feed a plug, though, it comes in from the bottom. All right. Him, push him all the way in the back. Now we got plenty of room to work. Now what we have to figure out is which one of these wires is the hot wire because that's the one we need to tie in with our plug. In order to do that we're going to need a tester. So let's talk about let's talk about testers. Here you've got like a, I believe that's like a $10 uh, multimeter. Here you've got, I think these things are like 20, 30, maybe 50 bucks. I don't know. We, we call them a wiggy, but it's just a basic voltage tester. If you're an apprentice electrician, you're going to be required to carry one of those. And then, you know, you could go up to even, I think this thing was like $85, $90 when I bought it. I don't know, 25 years ago. Uh, still works. I can use any one of these to do this. So whether you don't need the high speed uh, digital multimeter 
amp meter, ohm meter. You can do that all. We can use. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna show you the process on both of these. Uh, the multimeter, the digital one over there, it's going to be the same, so we're not going to be redundant. On your analog multimeter, what you want to do is you want to turn it to a voltage setting. Be a solid line with a dotted line underneath, so we need to turn it to the right voltage. Now we know a house is generally 120 volts. If, we, if we're trying to read at 250 volts, it should go halfway. So when we find the hot wire, it, it should peg halfway. So what I'm gonna do, it really doesn't matter which one of these you use. Um, one of them you're gonna take and put all the way into the back and touch that bare copper wire. And we're gonna turn our light switch off. And one of these, one of these will make this jump, okay? You see there, there's nothing there, right? And then we get a bounce there. Okay, so that tells me this is my hot wire. When I turn this on, we should get a reading on both. Okay. Now, all right, so we know this guy is our hot wire right here. What we're gonna do, is make sure he don't get us. I'm going to cut him right here at the switch. And so my light just went out. Now I want to straighten this wire out. i got to be careful. I knocked the end off of my linesman's plier, so i got to be careful. To straighten that wire out a little bit. And I'm going to screw a wire nut onto this. That tells me that's my hot wire. Curly Q, remember I told you about the Curly Q for the switch? Turns out that was correct. I'm just gonna cut that. We are replacing this switch, so there's just no reason to worry about taking the screws off. Unless you wanna reuse the switch later. So, we're going to take our strippers, pull that, get a nice little hook, and just like the receptacle process is exactly the same. Now it doesn't matter which one of these I put this on. on the only thing this switch does is connect the two and, and, and disconnect it. So it doesn't matter which position you put these in. Now we're going to make a pigtail like we did for the plug because we need we can't put both of these wires on that screw. Not only is that bad craftsmanship, that's illegal. So just like before, I cut a little piece of Romex off. One of the easiest ways to do this is you take your uh, your strippers and just push, and it'll pop out the end there, and then you can grab it and pull it out. I just need the black one. So we're gonna strip it, put a loop on it. Put it on our switch. Okay. 
Now, what I like to do with my pigtails, on, especially on one that uh, has already been made up before and I'm jumping into, is I like to take that whole thing and double it just like so. And then we're going to take this guy and move him over this side. Get him ready. We're going to take these two wires and strip them. Strip them a little longer than we normally would. We're going to go ahead and get these two started real loosely. See how the wraps aren't that tight? Now we're going to take this guy. Now this is where you got to be real careful how you handle your tools. Okay. Make sure I'm not touching any metal part of the of anything. I'm gonna reach up here. Okay. There he is. That's the guy that'll bite you if you let him. I'm gonna bring him down here. Lay him alongside those ones. Gotta be careful of that busted end on my pliers. See our light just came on, so it means our switch is in the on position. Okay, they're nice and twisted. Clean up the end. Put our wire nut back on. Okay, now, the only place I really gotta worry about uh, touching it now is on those either one of those screws. So I can handle these wires confidently. take and push them into the back and then you take your switch you double up the wires like so and there she is now I know the switch is on there's see there's off so I'm gonna make sure I get it the orientation correct a lot of these will actually say top on them but I know that when you're looking at a single pole switch the screws are on the right side hey it's me again yeah, guess what? Um, I goofed and uh, thought I should let y'all know. Um, when I put that switch in, I should have grounded it. You know, that's like natural electrician's code stuff there and all. Um, so I'm going to do the, the dad thing and say, you know, you need to do as I say and not as I do. Right? Um, so rewind in your head all the ways back to where we were uh, connecting the wires inside the switch. And uh, when we made up that ground wire, we should have added a ground pigtail. And then use that ground pigtail to ground the switch. And when you're hooking up the ground wire onto the switch, let me rephrase that. When you're hooking up the wires to the switch, you put the ground wire on first. And then your switch leg and then your energized wire, your hot, which is, which is the last one. So don't do as I did, do as I say. Now I'm going to take my screw gun. Always start with the bottom because you can lean to the side and get in there and line this, this one up and then do the top one. It's so much harder to do it the other way around. So now you see there's a little bit of movement in it, but it's still pretty solid. Here I'm going to put just a little quarter twist on there. Okay. Now I get my cover plate. Ta-da! Pull that out of the plastic. My trim screwdriver. Now here's the mistake a lot of people make on these cover plates is that, man, they crank them down and then they crack. 
what, what you do is you turn until you feel it start to resist and then you bring it back quarter turn or so I like to line my screws up so that the slots are in the vertical position that way it looks like you cared and there you go there's our single pull decor switch now in order to show you that the plugs work I'm going to use my old plug tester find it there it is um, what this is so you can read that this is uh, what they call a plug tester it gives you uh, one of my lenses fell out it gives you a series of lights depending on what they let these lights say is any kind of fault you might have in that plug and then this button here if it's a GFI rated plug and you push that button it'll pop the GFI and what we're looking for on this one is what we want is both yellow lights illuminated and the red one not so I'm gonna plug it in let's see what it looks like there it is they're both lit. I'll we'll check the other one. Same thing. Now I just need a cover plate from a plug. Alright. I'm back. It's been a few hours. This is the, uh, the wall plate I bought. I like the unbreakable ones because they're a little bit bigger, like it says right here, than the average ones, which covers up a cut in box a lot better. Now when you buy these, what you need to do before you leave the store is you need to shake all the screws down here and make sure you have all the screws that come with it. You know, you got four screw holes, make sure you got four screws. And then what I like to do is get all the screws on one side and just pull the corner through the plastic. And then pour the screws out in your hand. And then what we're going to do is punch these screws into the cover. Let's see how it's got the little gripper there to hold the screws for you. There, done deal. Now, we can go down there with our trim screwdriver. Now you don't tighten them all in one go. You start one and then you get the next one for the same plug. And now we're going to start another one. Saw how it shifted over and grabbed. And then we're going to get this one going. There we go. Beautiful. to adjust it. Remember I told you we'd leave those screws in there just, just a touch loose so there is some movement if we need it. What you can do is you can take a flathead screwdriver and you can tap it and you can get a little bit of movement out of it if it's crooked. See how that moves a little bit? But it looks pretty good to me right here. Let me get this, this screw bugging me. There we go. Nope, a little bit more. Right there. Nope, too far. Right there. Okay. Alright folks, that does it for this video. With that said, I'll wrap it up here. I want to thank you folks for taking the time to stop in and watch this video. And if you found it entertaining or useful in any way, hit that like button and let me know that I'm doing good work. And if you know anyone that's interested in this kind of thing, share this video with them and see if they can make use of it. And if you want to see more videos like this one or see any of the other projects I'm working on, hit that subscribe button. Y'all take care.